Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for game week four for the 5% series. The idea being you follow these instructions, you've got a nice big choice, you should finish in the top 5% globally and do all right in your mini leagues. So here we go. I'll start with looking at how we did in game week three, what could have happened and then suggestions for game week four. And I'll try not to make the video too long. So game week three, I always assume a 4-4-2 formation and of course it's quite possible none of you play a 4-4-2. This is just to get a rough idea of what the scores could have been. So you'd have each had one of these goalkeepers which would have got you an average of two points. Minimum zero, maximum four. Then I'm assuming two of these defenders. So they didn't do very well either. Maximum seven, minimum one, average 3.6. And then two of these. And it just wasn't really the week for defenders, I guess. So you could have actually got 12 if you had the right two here. Minimum three, average 6.8. Midfielders did better this week. So that was quite nice. So you could have got 22 from your these two midfielders. Minimum four, average 12.6. For the second selection of midfielders, you could have got 27. Minimum two, average 10.6. For the forwards... You could have got a maximum 11, minimum 1, 5.6 average. So you'd have only had one of these forwards, I'm assuming. And then I'm assuming one of these forwards as well, which was maximum 2, average 1.8, minimum 1. So I'm hoping you appreciate that I whizzed through that <laughs> rather than read out all the numbers. Because I, th I kind of figured most of you probably don't care about me reading out all the numbers and you know how you did. So the global average was 44. If you'd picked the worst possible players, and I've not checked it was a legal team from this system, you could have got 14 points. The average was 47.8, which is above the global average. And the maximum was 92 from the 442 formations that I showed you. Having spot checked people that I know are following this system, I'd say on average they beat the average. I got below the average, but that's okay because it's me. <laughs> if someone has to get a bad score, it has to be me. But looking back at my team, it wasn't a bad choice. I don't think it was a bad choice. It's just what happened. <laughs> so uh, looking ahead to game week four, what are we thinking? So regarding the goalkeepers, these are the goalkeepers we have available to us. So Edison is expected to get the best score. Any of the others moderately likely to let in a goal. Flecken might keep a clean sheet, I guess. Johnstone might. At some point, Johnstone may no longer be the number one keeper, though. Now, I am aware there may be, for example, the West Ham keeper we want to bring in. And there's a few West Ham players I would like to bring in. But they don't have very nice fixtures coming up in the next few weeks. So I'm not intending to bring them in yet. So I'm trying to keep this nice and simple. So there's none of these keepers that I would suggest selling. Unless you've got two transfers and there's nothing else you want to do. Then perhaps you could move one of the keepers about if you wanted to. But... Personally, I don't think it's worth changing a keeper. Regarding the first page of defenders, the more expensive defenders, Trent, he did get booked. He should have got sent off last game. He's got a chance of clean sheet, but now Van Dijk's not going to be playing. His chance is less. However, he has still got a chance of getting an attacking return. He is at home. It is Aston Villa. So I would be comfortable playing him, but I wouldn't be bringing him in. If you're making subs this week, I would not bring in Trent. But don't feel like you have to sell him. But if you want to release some cash, it's okay to sell him. Trippier is a Newcastle away to Brighton Hove Albion, but then they start a run of very nice fixtures. So if you had nothing else to do and you want to do a change, Trippier would be a good player to bring in because there's a reasonable chance his price is going to start going up the next two or three weeks. I've already got Trippier. I brought him in last week. Chilwell is still green. Chelsea have a very nice run of fixtures coming up. If you've not got Trippier, he's worth getting. Shaw, uh, he's injured, so we're not going to be showing him after this week. He's going to be out of the system. James, I've put him as orange because you can sell him if you want to, but he will hopefully be back in the next couple of game weeks, so you don't have to sell him if you've got enough coverage elsewhere on your bench. And if he comes back and is fit, there's a reasonable chance you might want to buy him anyway. But there are other good defenders, so we don't have to buy him. Now, there's a Chelsea defender called Gusto who's not in this system. The reason I've not put him in is it's expected when James is back and fit, Gusto's going to be out. So there's no point having him for the sake of one or two weeks and then selling him again. 
a stupid man. Brighton have some difficult fixtures coming up, apart from Bournemouth in a couple of weeks' time. So it's not worth bringing him in. If you've got him, you may want to sell him for somebody better. If you want to keep him, that's fine. He's not too expensive. I've got a stupid and I'll be keeping him. But you don't have to copy me. Saliba, 5.2. And Akanji, 5.1. Akanji's currently flagged as injured. So I personally wouldn't be bringing him in. But he's in the system, so that's why I'm showing him. The cheaper page of defenders. we got Porro at 4.9. Tottenham defender, he's good. Gabriel, I think it's probably worth selling Gabriel. He's just not getting the minutes and there are other defenders that are better. For example, Porro. So um, if you've got Gabriel, I'd suggest selling him. Possibly not worth it for a hit. But if it makes enough sense, it's okay to take a hit. And whoever you bring in is probably going to score more than four points over the next few weeks than Gabriel. Udogi's a new one we've brought in. Tottenham defender, he's Clearly looks like he's going to get the minutes. He is attacking. Tottenham have some nice fixtures coming up. Okay, two good fixtures, two bad fixtures, then some more good fixtures. So if you've got Gabriel, you want to swap him for a doggy, that seemed to be a good move. And regarding saying his name right or wrong, there's lots of people saying the name different. All that matters is you've got an idea of who it is I'm trying to talk about. Colwell for Chelsea, nice and cheap, four and a half million. Still wearing the Brighton shirt, I need to change that. Pinnock for Brentford, they're at home to Bournemouth, that could be nice, but then away to Newcastle, so there's a reasonable chance they concede them, but then they're home to Everton, so that's a nice fixture. Botman, 4.5, possibly injured, well he's injured at the moment, as far as we know. I wouldn't bring Botman in, we need to assume he's probably going to be injured for at least the next game, but we don't know that for sure. Bayer, this is just some to sit on your bench, as is Bulldog. Bulldog, he's orange because you can take him out if you want to. But if he's fit and he plays against Everton, that's okay. So on this page, Udogi's worth getting. Pinnock, maybe short term's worth getting. But only if you're looking to get rid of. So Gabriel for Udogi or Pinnock would be all right. Probably Udogi would be the better move there. So the expensive midfielders. Salah I've marked as orange. He's a very good player. He's in my team. I'm almost certainly going to keep him. I've only marked him as orange because there may be a player who you'd rather have in midfield, because there are some midfielders with some very nice fixtures coming up. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five players from Man United or Arsenal. It could be a nil-nil, could be a 2-2. If there are goals in that game, there's a reasonably high chance that one or more of these players are going to be involved. But equally, there's a good chance that most of these players are only going to get two points, maybe three, this coming game week. So I wouldn't be looking to bring any of these five in this week. If you wanted to sell one of these to bring in another midfielder who's got a good run, that's all right if you wanted to. I I would be hesitant to sell Fernandes and maybe Saka, but it's your team. The idea of this system is you can kind of get any of their players and you should be all right. But if you only buy the cheapest players, the ones that would go on the bench, then you're not going to do all right. But none of these are bench players. Madison... He was marked as orange last week because he was thought to be injured. Well, he was injured. But by the time the weekend came around, he was all right and he did well. He's absolutely worth having. So, for example, if you didn't know who to sell Salah for, Madison's worth getting in for and he's nearly 5 million cheaper, 4.8 million cheaper. And that frees up some money to do something else with. But in any game week, Salah could easily outscore Madison. Foden, another green one. He only got a few points last week, but that's because he was ill and he came on just for the last few minutes and he got a very lucky assist. But Man City have a good run of fixtures and if he plays, and you never know of Pep Roulette, then he could well get some very good points. Regarding the cheaper page of defenders, Sterling, another very good player worth bringing in. He's got some very good fixtures coming up. Embremo, still a good player, at home to Bournemouth and in two weeks' time home to Everton. Matoma, I've got Matoma, I'll be keeping hold of Matoma, but again he's orange because if you want to sell one of your midfielders for the likes of Sterling or Madison or Foden, Matoma may be the one. So I have considered selling Salah and Matoma, maybe getting Sterling and Madison instead, but I'm probably not going to do that because I quite like Salah and I quite like Matoma, but that would be a completely valid thing to do and it would be all right. 
as a palace still worth holding on to. Home to Wolves, two weeks time, home to Fulham. Gibbs White, he did well at the weekend. Casemiro, he got a goal at the weekend and these are cheaper players now. Lerma and Nakamba, they're really for the bench. Regarding the forward, the more expensive forwards, Haaland, he's green, he may always be green. Home to Fulham, hopefully you've all got him. Watkins, he's got, I think, five points every week. Okay, they're away to Liverpool, but then he's home to Palace, two weeks later, home to Brighton. Could be getting some points. There are some other Aston Villa players that are very good that I'm considering bringing in, but not this week because they're away to Liverpool. It wasn't worth it. Wilson, for Newcastle, he's okay to sell. I've not made him red. He's not compulsory to sell, but you may rather change him for somebody else which would be completely fine. Darwin was orange last week. He wasn't getting the minutes. He's still not getting the minutes, but he came on for 10 minutes and got two goals against Newcastle. So maybe he's going to get more minutes now. And if he does, maybe he's going to be getting more points. So if I had Darwin, I wouldn't be selling him this week. I'd be seeing how he's going to do at home to Aston Villa. And then Jackson, 7.1 million. So for example, if you've got Wilson, absolutely sell him for Jackson. Even if it cost you a hit because you're doing something else, that would be worth doing. Then we also have Alvarez for Man City. He's a new addition. That They have some good fixtures coming up. As with any Man City player, there's a risk of him getting rotated, not getting the minutes. But assuming he gets the minutes, uh, he's absolutely worth having. Solanke for Bournemouth. He's more of a cheap player. I wouldn't be bringing him in, but you don't have to sell him either. Visser for... Brentford, he's got two good fixtures next three games. Actually, he's got three good fixtures next four games. Uh, Jao Pedro's probably worth moving on now. I should have probably made him orange. Adibayo is just for the bench. He's cheap, as is Mubama. So the benching order for the goalkeepers, this is the order I suggest you put them on the bench. So the first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting you put on your bench. If you have Turner, Forrester away to Chelsea, put them on the bench. If you don't have him, but you have a Nana for Man United. Now, they've only kept two clean sheets and they should have had a penalty against them when they did keep a clean sheet. And they're away to Arsenal. Reasonably high chance he's not going to get a clean sheet. Then Ramsdale, Kay's at home, but he's playing against Man United. This is a suggested order. You don't have to do that. The reason it's suggested, I've got Everton above Ramsdale and Nana, but they are away to Sheffield United. This is a good chance of getting a clean sheet. But any of those three, they're all quite close. You may want to mix them around a bit. Fleck and Brentford at home to Bournemouth. Good chance of a clean sheet. Johnson home to Wolves. Good chance of a clean sheet. Man City away to Fulham. Good chance of a clean sheet. So that's my suggested order. But go for who you like. Regarding the other players, you've got three other spaces on the bench. The first player I show you that you've got, I'm suggesting it goes possession three. The second one, position two. The third one, position one. But it has to be a legal formation. So if you still got James, he's injured. He he goes on your bench. Sure, you should be selling. But if you find he's still in your team, he's the next one on your bench. Then Nakamba, Adibayo, Mubama, Bayer, Botman, Gabriel, Solanke, Wilson, Bulldog, Jao Pedro, Casemiro, Gibbs White, Lerma. Hopefully most of you have got at least one of these players, maybe two, maybe even three, because we're going to start getting into the better players now. Trippier, Pinnock, Akanji, Stupinan, Porro, Sal- Saliba, Watkins, Trent, Colwell, Udogi, Mitoma, Rashford, Fernandez, Martinelli, Darwin, Odegaard, Vissa, Saka. And there's 10 other players in the system that won't be on your bench. If you want to move some of these around a bit, that's okay. This is just my suggested order. <laughs> Regarding captaincy, Haaland's got a reasonably good chance of getting a good score this week. He's probably going to be the most captain player. So I think he's worth being the one to get the old mule hat. But as always, there's a choice. If you'd rather have Salah at home to Villa, he's probably going to get a big score at some point. he would be an alternative. We also have Sterling. For Chelsea, he could be getting a very good score this week. As could Foden, as could Mbremo. All of these may get good scores this week. It's unlikely none of these are going to get a double-digit score. Haaland is the safest pick because most people are going to be going for him. 
So you're going to be hurt the most if you go for somebody else, but Harland outscores you. So I suggest choose one of these as your captain. Choose a different one as your vice captain. If you haven't got two of these, then one of these is your captain. And then whichever one of your outfield players is expected to get a good score. You can tell who they are because they've got the green boxes on the names earlier in the video. Personally, I wouldn't have Harlan captain and Foden vice captain just for the very remote chance that the game gets postponed. And that's, that's it. The only other thing to say is, honestly, I'm struggling to think what to do for the pictures now. So you may have heard that it's been in the news recently, not so much on the BBC, but certainly the news in other places like CBS. I'll try and put a link below and other news sites that the American government, it's kind of now been exposed that they have had alien aircraft. They've had crashed alien aircraft for a few decades and they've actually got some of the alien bodies and they reverse engineered some of these spacecraft. And they're kind of talking up about, oh, maybe they're going to come here. We need to defend the Earth. So they're going to try and presumably tax people lots of money. But of course, the real reason we have alien visitors, if we do, is they just want to try and understand some of these refereeing decisions that are going on. So this picture is aliens coming over a football match. <laughs> Hopefully that made sense. I tried to make it short and I can see it wasn't a short video after all. If you're wanting me to try even harder to make these videos shorter, I can do that. But you could just try and play it on double speed, I guess, on YouTube, and then you'll get through it quick. Or just do the slider bar backwards and forwards to see the bits you want to see. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. <laughs>